It seems like Venezuela's Nicolas Maduro is now planning to add illegal annexations to the list of reasons why he's Latin America's most problematic socialist dictator. A December 3rd, 2023 referendum asked Venezuelans if they would be in support of incorporating over two-thirds of Guyana's territory into a new Venezuelan state. On the surface, it just sounds like Maduro is hoping the United States would be too busy with its proxy wars in the old world to care if Maduro pulls a Putin in the new world. However, all Guyanese will tell you that his claims are not new and this conflict is actually over a century old. The Guyana-Venezuela border dispute. Why is this even a dispute in the first place? One word, colonialism. Guyana's ugly origin story that still comes back to haunt us every couple of years, like a Batman remake. But to understand this tale, let's go back, way back back in the time, to 1897 to be exact. At the time, the great powers of the world viewed South America like a huge game of chess. The prize? Defining the boundaries in this rich, uncharted territory. You see, Guyana back then was colonized by the Dutch after being controlled by the French, after being controlled by the Brits, and then by the Dutch, and I know it sounds confusing, but check this video out for more about that. In 1814, the Dutch transferred ownership of the colonies to the British, but ownership was not enough. They needed their borders too, solid ones, nice, bold black lines. Remember, this is the empire that felt the need to plant its flag on every continent on the face of earth. And wherever that flag is planted, the Brits wanted to make sure they accurately survey and extract every single gram of resources within those shiny black lines. This brings us to Sir Robert Herman Schomburg and the beginning of all Guyana's woe. Well, that's not entirely correct, and you know, if you don't count indigenous land theft, African slavery, Indian, Chinese, and Portuguese indentured ship, uh, you get the idea. You see, Sir Robert Herman Schomburg was a German born botanist, explorer, and part time cartographer who so impressed the British Royal Geographical Society with his surveys that they actually commissioned him to conduct exploratory expeditions in British Guiana in 1835. He then spent the next four years exploring and mapping the natural history of the region, returning to London in 1839 as a hero. And in 1841, Schomburg would return to Guyana's shores yet again, this time as a British government official who was tasked by the crown to officially demarcate British Guiana's border with Venezuela. Schomburg and his team then spent the next three years trapezing through the rainforest. During that time, they navigated rivers, traversed dense jungles, and engaged with various indigenous communities, gathering valuable geographical and cultural information along the way. And in June of 1844, he returned to London as an even bigger rock star than before. He was even knighted by the Queen for his work in Guyana the following year. His proposed boundary, known as the Schomburg Line, may have impressed old Vicky in London, but you know who wasn't impressed? Venezuela. To put it lightly, Venezuela felt like they were robbed harder than a school child at a bus park, as Schomburg extended British claims significant, well beyond what was even recognized among the locals. I mean, blood even claimed the mouth of the Orinoco River for the Queen. And for the next four decades, Venezuela bitterly complain. But things didn't get serious until October 1886. The British declared the line to be the official, provisional, border, prompting Venezuela to sever all diplomatic ties less than four months later. Venezuela would then spend the next several years lobbying Washington DC to do something about this, which they promptly did. I'm just kidding. Yeah, America basically ignored them for close to another decade. And that was until the US finally had enough of Venezuela's cries for an intervention and pulled the Monroe Doctrine card by declaring the formation of an arbitration committee in 1897. Sadly, this would just be one of many other American interventions in Latin America that had disastrous consequences for all involved. For the arbitration committee, Venezuela brought in Justice Melville Fuller, Chief Justice of the US Supreme Court. The UK countered with Lord Russell of of Kilowen, its own chief justice, 
and to lead the charge, Fyodor Martins, a renowned Russian diplomat and legal scholar. Yes, Russia. Now, keep in mind this wasn't Putin's Russia or even the USSR, but a Tsarist empire intertwined with the capitalist West. Remember, monarchs love money just as much as businessmen too. The legal dream team armed with the best surveyors and cartographers of the time delved deep. Their task was building upon Sir Robert Schomburg's initial 1840s demarcation. And fast forward two years later and boom, the 1899 Arbitral Award. Now, Venezuela wasn't too happy with the results as the British were awarded nearly 94% of the territory in question. But locally, they painted the award as a victory. After the lion clearly demarcated the vast Orinoco area, a territory larger than modern Guyana, as theirs. Their parliament ratified the borders, and it was a happy ending for Venezuela in this high-stakes geopolitical game as they all walked together hand in hand into the sunset whilst the credits rolled. That is what I would like to say. But wait! Fast forward over six decades and in 1961, Venezuela's president Romulio Bentancourt comes forward, claiming they were shortchanged in the deal. Why the change of art? Two words. Uh, technically two names, but uh, you know, whatever, it's Castro I'm talking about, Fidel Castro, okay? Yeah, Castro. Fidel Castro is actually a pretty reoccurring character in the ridiculous sideshow known as Cold War era Caribbean politics. Anyway, Castro's communist revolution ousted the corrupt money loving regime of Fulgencio Batista. And that sent shivers down the spines of all the corrupt right wing Latin American leaders who had been running their countries like personal thiefdoms. Venezuela's president needed a distraction, a rallying cry, if you will. So he turns to the age-old tactic, stoking nationalistic fervor over territorial claims. So when Benton Court caught wind of the British plan to soon grant Guyana its independence, he set off on a plan to demonize Dr. Chetty Jagan as a communist bent on turning Guyana into a second Cuba in order to scare the British into reversing their independence plan and possibly force negotiations with them. The plan had mixed results to say the least. So plan B, allegations of bribery in the 1899 arbitration, albeit based on flimsy evidence. These allegations were partially based on a memorandum discovered in the archives of a deceased Venezuelan lawyer named Severo Malé Prevost, who served as a junior counsel for Venezuela during the 1899 arbitration. In this memorandum, written shortly before his death, but only published after his death, Talk about convenient. Malay Provost expressed his belief that the British and Russian arbitrators had colluded to decide the boundary in favor of Britain, excluding the American arbitrator Chief Justice Melville Fuller from critical discussions and decisions. Old accusation, to say the least. Just months before Guyana gained its independence, Venezuela finally made some progress. The 17th of February, 1966, Geneva, Switzerland. Venezuela, Great Britain, and almost independent Guyana sit down to hash it out peacefully. Discussions, proposals, but no cigar. Now, I won't bog you down with the details of that agreement, but key points for it were 1. The establishment of a mixed commission comprising of representatives from both Guyana and Venezuela. 2. A neutral chairman to be chosen to seek a peaceful resolution to this result. And 3. The commission was given four years to complete the task. However, they did not complete the task. As such, they were supposed to go to the United Nations with this issue. 51 years later, and no progress. Cue the International Court of Justice, 2017. Venezuela's initial play, rejecting the court's authority, yet paradoxically engaging with a battalion of lawyers. The stakes, high. The outcome, pending. But the word on the street, Ghana's case is strong, Venezuela's case is shaky at best. However, this border dispute coming to a close could be the best thing to happen between Guyana and Venezuela. Imagine the future. Two nations, once entangled in a century-old legal tussle, now potential partners in progress. 
a harmonious resolution that could set a precedent for the entire Caribbean and Latin American region. And as for the December 3rd referendum, St. Vincent's Prime Minister Ralph Gonzalves, no relation, Gonzalves has since sat the two sides down to agree to not use force during this dispute, but we'll have to see how that plays out. So there you have it, a century-spanning saga full of legal drama, political intrigue, and the fate of nations hanging in the balance. Thanks for sticking it to the end with me. If you're as fascinated by this as I am, hit the subscribe button and follow all our links in the description for more. And finally, if you are exploring the tangled web of your nation's past, you're doing it for the culture.